Hello, good evening, welcome back to the Bach Cello Suites workshops. Um, it's been a long break, my apologies. There were some uh, unexpected uh, uh, concerts and of course we want to take each opportunity these days. So I took them and so it was a quite a busy weeks. But uh, after this long break, we are back for the jig from the fifth suite and my guest tonight will be uh, my dear friend, amazing musician, conductor Pablo Heras Casado. And uh, he will be with us in about 15 minutes after we talk about um, our gig. So I want to, because we had this very long break, I want to give you again some uh, perspective about how we get to this gig. So you remember we start with this very stormy prelude um, um, I won't play it again because I already talked about it basically in each movement of the fifth because it's so um, decisive how this prelude starts. We have our fugue, our only fugue for solo cello by Bach uh, in within this prelude. We have the Allemande with all these still French dotted punctuated rhythms, so with a lot of energy and dignity at the same time, an extremely concentrated implosion within the courant. And then you remember there is this big, um, hmm, like, like if we went over a cliff uh, into the Sarabande where we are, we enter timelessness, uh, uh, a zone where there is, where uh, Bach manages to give us a feeling, a sense that we escape from materia, from from actual, yes, from you know he he unable to lift us, you know, quite quite far away from this world, but very close to our souls. Maybe you know I'm trying to just <laughs> express what I feel, um, no matter how imperfect it is. And then we had, you remember these uh, gavots, which are very soft, tender gavots. Uh, so uh, still um, in this, after, after this Sarabande, I think Bach wants to leave us in something. We don't go back to the, to what was this, the beginning, the very stormy first half of this suite. It's going to be a bit similar um, in the jig. Uh, before I go into this, I have to make a follow-up on two points. I'm just seeing on my notes that I, that I wrote there. And then we will get to our jig. Um, since there was so much time since the last episode, uh, people came back to me about some things I said, something I suggested, and, and some questions I was raising. There was something you remember I mentioned about the very beginning of the prelude, where in the cello version, there is no natural in front of the A. So uh, theoretically, in Anna Magdalena's... Uh, uh, and I discovered it myself sort of on the way during these workshops, and I found it very exciting at least. I'm, I'm not sure I was, uh, you know, that this is the right thing, but I found it very interesting. And uh, even though the lute version contradicts with the A natural, now, uh, Eva Morgenstern, who is in Freiburg and who has been watching all the, the episodes since a very long time and giving me a lot of feedback, she gave me a very important point. She said, actually I, that she has never seen in Bach in any other piece that he would use in a scale like this ascending one that he would use the augmented second and of course I think that's a very good argument I wanted to share it with you and if some of you have a very decisive um, uh, uh, feedback to give about this, please, you are very welcome to do it, as always. The other thing is that 
uh, in the meanwhile, since I did the workshop on the Sarabande, I had a, a lesson on the Sarabande with my dear student Benedict. And um, I was, he, and you know, he had watched the episode, thank you, Benedict, and he was actually trying to reflect on it in his playing, but I could see that he was, his slurs, uh, were very, hmm, he wanted to respect the slurs and have a great legato. And we both realized that in this particular case, this is a good example that a slur, you can, you have to play legato if you play a slur, but you do need this emphasis on the second beat through the dissonance is going to be nevertheless predominant in a way. So that even though I have a slur, within the slur, I do have to dig in when I reach the second beat, much more than we would do in a normal slur. I thought I would share it with you, um, dear colleagues out there, um, to make sure there is no misunderstanding about this. That, yeah, you know, we have had already almost, I think, uh, 29 episodes to talk about slurs. And, uh, but this is one more example of how the infinite variety about slurs. Now I come back to the subject of the day, Argic. Algic, I think, still goes on in this character that was given to us in the Gavotte. It's not going to be a fiery jig. It's not going to be a very dancing one. It's a philosophical one. It's one that uh, I, I put the adjective uh, uh, soothing. For me, it's a, it's a very soothing music, you will see. It still has the punctuated, the dotted rhythms of the French influence that all this suite uh, is having, but in a very, I find, gentle, soothing way. Um, I will play just a little bit and then I will give you a few commentary about this. Uh. suggests a rather slow jig. It's not a 6-8, it's not a 12-8, like we have had in some other suites, a 3-8. So we're really 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So we cannot be very fast. First remark. The dotted rhythms you noticed, again, the French presence. Now, the first remark I want to make is that obviously, even though the we have very small bars, 1, 2, one, two, three, one. They are organized very clearly. The, the basic pattern is four bars. So why is it important? Because I think it's important that you feel that your phrasing and your bass line is going to the third bar and that from there you relax. So So that the fourth bar of this is only, you remember, I call it confirmation notes like Anna Belsma uh, taught me. So when you start this, don't give too much bow so that you, as you go to the third bar, you give a bit more bow so that your phrasing is clearly balancing towards this first bar, uh, this third bar. Uh, and here, these are confirmation notes. What does that mean? Less weight in the arm, less bow. Uh, and then go to the next uh, structure of four, of four bars. Uh, now, um, what he um, does here is what we have seen also in some other places and which I love very much is that at the end of this uh, second series um, of, of four bars, instead of doing uh, this motif that we had before, uh, he does uh, so. Uh, now, which was just the, the end, you know, the, the, the little conclusion of this format. 
but it's he's going now to use it of course as a mot as a main motive uh, <laughs> way by doing smaller structures two bars uh, two bars uh, um, as we have seen in other suites he after having clearly four bar four bar he does two 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 to lead us to the highest point of this first part so in that way with smaller elements he creates a longer phrase a little detail I wanted to share with you is that this uh, or, uh, that this little motif remember from the Allemand this was our main element in the Allemand and um, it's it's so nice that even in the small detail Bach enjoys working on the motifs as well now an important event is happening as we reach this highest note of the of this first part is that we are going to do a sort of i will call it now it's probably the wrong term but a reversed hemiola so you remember we have seen so many hemiolas we have talked about them it's when mainly most of the time it's we are in a rhythm of, of three you know one two three one two three and then we skip uh, every second beat in order to do a larger pattern that to bring two bars together in a slow one two three one that's the most classical hemiola now here what he does what um bach does is that and it's the only time in in all the six suites and it's rather rare is that after installing this very clear balancing in four bars in two bars we are going to go in three bars uh, one, two, one, twice three bars and which gives us i think a sense of of suspension and for those of you cellists out there i would suggest make sure that you sustain enough your song to the second bar and then our four four concluding bars again normal um, we start the second half, as always, with our basic structures. Again, four bars. So we have done our modulation and our episode in G minor with nice three episodes of four bars. Now we do a sequence, so which gives us a nice and friendly ba balancing. F minor, E flat minor. And by the way, remember for those of you cellists, um, enjoy this duality. You have four bars in F minor, the bars in E flat, in, uh, e -flat major, and give them, give each tonality its color. So there is this dialogue. Um, now again, the smaller structures in order to make a longer phrase. We could think that we have arrived. We are again in our home key of C minor, but for the very end of this jing and the very end of this very expressive fifth suite, he wants to give a small last modulation. Again, the hemiola, we are in three. detail this time six bars instead of four for the conclusion you know he could have done like um, to do 
four bars like he did at the end of the first part, but instead... Now, in a, one last thought I want to give to you about this way that Bach works on motives and on tensions and release and things. He based all these fifth suites on these first two bars, like he does very often, you know, he, he impresses us, and, but in this case, it's very, very striking. The first bar is ascension and drama. I'm going back to the prelude and you will understand why. So we rise. You know, very dramatic gesture. And the second bar is we recover from this. This descending line. So a rising one and this. And, and this, this shock of energies is going to build basically all the suite with some movement actually, uh, you know, putting the accent on the descending line, like the Allemand. And on the contrary, the courant, the ascending line. So the, the, the rising and, the, and the, the voluntary rising of the line. Now, the this jig definitely, like in the Allemande, is, is actually dealing mostly, I mean, as a main motif, with the descending line. And it's the same thing here in the end. My little explanation for these six bars instead of two is that Bach wants to bring to bring us up one last time so that we finish in this uh, descending line, uh, which I don't think is resignation, because in Bach, I don't think there is ever really resignation. He was never, you know, but anyways, that's my understanding. So, but uh, we rise one last time in order to be able to finish again with the... with the, with the descending line. Uh, and go to the absolute bottom, the low C, where, you remember, where we started at the beginning of the prelude. Enough talking. We now have the great uh, joy well no there will be more talking but enough talking by myself now is the great moment where we welcome pablo heras casado dear pablo can you hear me can we see you dear pablo yes et voilà et voilà dear pablo <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time tonight no of course of to course be it's been uh, first of all well it's, it's so great to see you i think last time we saw each other was in in berlin in june yes we saw each other live and after that we've been trying to get this moment together since long time but I, i'm so happy and and i'm thrilled you you cannot imagine how much i've enjoyed this 17 minutes of of music that you have uh, gave us oh. really really pa wonderful Pablo, too, it's too kind it's too kind we yes we have tried for a long time <laughs> to find this moment but it's so crazy um before we go to our subject uh i i want to talk about the context that it's uh, almost paradoxical that we do find a little moment you you managed to find a little moment in the middle of you are in you are in a production of Siegfried uh, in uh, in Madrid at the opera. Do you want to tell us a few words about That's this? True. I mean, it's for seen from from Germany where I am right now. This is like a dream. So how is that possible? Is is Spain showing the way to the rest of Europe? Uh, because I think you you guys are exactly. Can you imagine in these times how not just to, to make music a few people, a few of us, but, but to put together a production of Siegfried, one of the biggest uh, challenges in, in, uh, in music, in music and theater. And, uh, and yes, I mean, it is, it is possible. It is possible. Uh, Teatro Real in Madrid since late June uh, 
they decided uh, in the previous months in Spain was very tough and it was a complete lockdown in the whole country since March. Mm-hmm. And in those during those months, they were they didn't stop. They they were just trying to figure out how to come back and how to make it possible with the with the right uh, let's say with all the security measures and with the right um, um, procedures to make it safe for everyone and to make it possible. And they they were the pioneers in, in opening a theater in the world and as they are now. And, and since then they've been open. Um, everyone in, on, in the theater, musicians, technical staff, uh, administration, everyone uh, in also the audience is absolutely safe and responding to the security and, and and uh, the health care uh, measurements and, uh, and yeah and it's it's about uh, finding uh, finding solutions for that uh, that means that uh, of course it's difficult for everyone uh, but we all have uh, uh, covid tests weekly we all have a very strict very very strict measurements of, of wearing masks and not being together in, in close spaces etc when we are together in a rehearsal space we respect the all the separation the one meter and a half separation that we have this kind of uh, um um i don't know how do, how do you say that, this kind of screens between musicians oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and and then for for siegfried of course the the ultimate challenge was to put together an orchestra for wagner which is a it's a huge orchestra uh, and we found a way after months of work and, and and trying to find the way of putting some musicians on the in the in the audience uh, some musicians in the pit. We have one of the biggest pits in uh, um, opera uh, orchestra pit in Europe, and putting some family of, of musicians and the different families on the on the side uh, uh, um, part of the of the of the audience, okay. and uh, we we we've managed to put eighty seven musicians playing together which for a Wagner orchestra is a little bit smaller in terms of the string size than in, um, in previous years, but still it's a, it's a full size uh, Wagner orchestra and we are making it possible. And, and so far uh, everything is going great. And uh, there, there hasn't been any single case related to theater, related to the audience coming since June, any single, um, uh, let's say in, in a positive case of, of COVID. So everything is, is, is going in the right direction. And of course, we are very happy that uh, this is uh, an example to the rest of the world. Fantastic, fantastic. I, I you know, I, I, I doubt uh, Mrs. Merkel or Macron are, are watching workshops on the bar suites, but I wish they were <laughs> and they could listen to you because, because that's the point. I think, I think now we are really, I think all the theaters and, and concert venues are so ready to do what it takes to make it safe and to make the music live again. So let's, let's keep uh, spreading yes. the word, spreading the word instead of the, of the COVID. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let's go. Um, I think I would like to start with this, um, um, dear Pablo. I remember a stellar concert for me. Uh, in you in Freiburg, you were conducting an a cappella uh, mm-hmm. a concert, just just choir, just voices. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. many years ago. It was just after we had our Schumann project, so it was probably something like six years ago or something. Like exactly. This. Yeah. 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 Yes, I don't remember exactly the program, but I remember and. Um, I was absolutely fascinated by your incredible faculty to work with with voices and with lines and with the counterpoint and all these things. And I thought this is just for us instrumentalists. This is the the Valhall. This is really the the absolute idea. Um, how could you could you t- help us uh, you know there are many um, cellists watching uh, professional amateurs and everything and can you help how how do we with our little instrument our little four strings how can we make uh, do you agree first of all that this suite that it's it's still it is inspired by vocal music in some ways and and Should and we- can we make it lyrical Absolutely, and, and 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 you know it's exactly when I, I was I was enjoying so much uh, listening to you, uh, what what you had to say in this, let's say, 
very, let's say, simple. Let's say jig is a very simple structure. So four Absolutely. bars, two bars, and then it's expanding to three bars sometimes, and how the harmonic progression is. And I mean, it's a relatively, it's only one instrument. It's a relatively small uh, uh, piece. So, so not even a couple of minutes with the repeats, etc. cetera. But, uh, y but y there is a big dramatic line arch, which is just, uh, I mean, the, 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 the script, let's say, so to say the, the libretto, it's in the little detail in each harmonic movement in how he expands the, 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 the grouping of, uh, of every bar in the in the harmonic relations etc this is the core of music since early 13 14th century until our days until our days this kind of intimate harmonic chromatic and melodic relations is the core of music you 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 cannot just uh, um just hope or wait for an indication of piano or forte or crescendo diminuendo or just uh, written by the composer everything the 99.9% .9 is within the notes mm -hmm. and it's in the core of the music and this for me it's the the most uh, important uh, heritage that, that i have from all many many years conducting early music conducting choir music conduct mm -hmm. being myself a, um, a a singer and then a choir conductor and and everything from i mean i'm doing i'm doing wagner now but whatever i do in the repertoire it, it's it, it's sustained by this these principles and of course when you play cello and and especially in these suites for me this contains it's a full encyclopedic piece when you find everything in only one uh, instrument one line you can just uh, create a whole polyphonic world and in, in which i mean in the in the case of in the case of this jig uh, it's it's only one line but of course it's a, it's suggesting different layers in the harmony mm -hmm. in other pieces in the in the in the zaraband uh, in the almond uh, there um, it's a more polyphonic let's say structure when there mm -hmm. are some suggested voices that are overlapping but but still it's everything everything is there and and your explanations about how to phrase how to structure how to make the big arc of, uh, of the, the, the discourse, mm -hmm. it's within the notes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this has to be always, always the, the fundamental and main, and main uh, uh, it's a principle to shape the whole, I mean, even it's a jig of uh, not even two minutes or uh, a full symphony of one hour. Mm -hmm. it, this is, this is the, 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 these are the pillars of, of, the, of the discourse. And uh, yes, I mean it's it's all coming from the voice. Mm -hmm. It's all coming from polyphony. It's all coming from 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 also the the organic uh, because because the music reflects the speech as well. Mm -hmm. And and when you have uh, this concert that you you were uh, referring to was a concert with Balthasar Neumann and some uh, mm -hmm. choir. It was music by Pretorius, three different composers named Pretorius from North Germany, another Michael Pretorius, Hieronymus, Jakob Pretorius. And, and it's all it was all music based on the on the Hohes Lied, the Song of Songs. It's a book in the in the Bible, plenty uh, full of erotism in the Bible. Composers use lots of uh, a lot of this this music, this this sorry, this uh, text to reflect into music sensualism dissonance and in the in a very basic way we are talking about 16th century or early 17th century maybe and uh, of course there's nothing written in the score about instruments about uh, about uh, shaping music about uh, uh, you know creating any climax or everything is in the in the in the relation between between uh, uh, tension and relaxation in the in the discourse between in in, uh, in the chromatic discourse and, and and how he so everything is there everything is there and uh, when conducting a Brahms symphony Beethoven symphony no matter what this is the this is the uh, the soul and the essence of music and uh, and so I was so 
so uh, happy and, 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 and identified with what you were saying and, and in how to shape and uh, in periods of two or three or four going to, one has to have this very strong conscious knowledge of, of the elements, elements of, of music. I, you know, I, it's so wonderful because we, it's, it's funny, we had, we had a few years, the, when we had this Schumann project about six years ago, uh, we had a big tour together and we talked about many different things, but we never actually talked about this. But this, for me, explains a lot what you just said and probably tell, contradict me if it's not the, the right thing, but maybe the fact that you started at, you, at your beginnings, you did mainly vocal, you, you say yourself, you, you, are, you were a singer, maybe you, are, you still are, and you, you worked a lot with choirs, with, uh, and, and, and because I remember with, with Isabel Faust and, and Alexander Mendikov that we were reflecting on this incredible, um, uh, I have not the word in German, Geschmeidigkeit, this, uh, this incredible <laughs> sup suppleness, I don't know if it's the right word in, uh, in English. Suppleness. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that you managed to, to, to work on the sound of the orchestra, it was with the Freiburger Baroque Orchestra, absolutely amazing, that you were getting this and, and I, somehow I have the feeling that it's because of what you just said, as, that, that the way you look at it also, that it's all coming from the voice, from the line. So it's really, really fantastic. As it um, happens, I, uh, I received... Um, uh, half an hour before the, the, the workshop, uh, dear Pablo, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I received very nice emails from people watching this, this show. And, and this one I wanted to read to you because it's very, very nice. It's from Antonio. And you will see why I want to read you. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. try to... Uh, dear jean Guillen, after your last episode on the Gavod, I've been thinking of sending you thanks for the series. Um, oh, a beginner. So I'll try to, to go to the main part. Oh, is your son there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's 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 just behind me, and he was. Uh... Oh, he's just waking up. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So, I will just quickly. So anyway, um, no, no. he he has been following all the episodes, and a friend of his also uh, sent him links to the Adagio series as a gift, as a birthday gift. I was so happy to to hear that. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's not the reason I'm reading this. But he said. Oh, I see today the participation of Pablo Harris Casado is foreseen for the episode on the on the jig. I don't know him personally, but he happens to be from Granada in Spain, where I was also born. And I remember some concerts uh, with his starting steps in the orchestral direction way more than 20 years ago. These two circumstances made me think on how small this infinite music world is and gave me further impulse to send this message to you. Thank you again. I look forward to watching the episode. So you have a greeting from Granada, from uh, Antonio. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> I wonder, I miss so much. It's, yeah, it's 25 years ago since I started in Granada, precisely, uh -huh. conducting music by the 16th century and with my early music ensemble and then little by little doing orchestral things and uh, yeah yeah those were important important very fundamental years for me for yeah. you know starting in, into this and this I, I was in the, my long discourse uh, before this made a very strong impact in me and how I I, I conceive music making in, in mm -hmm. uh, you know in, in this, this early music uh, experiences back in those years in Granada were very important. So it's, uh, thank you for bringing me back this. <laughs> yeah, back there. Antonio, thank you, Antonio. Um, well, actually, Pablo, I will, uh, uh, and dear friends out there, I hope you will forgive me. I uh, exceptionally would like to talk about a CD release because um, mm -hmm. we just in the coming days, in the very next days and, and, and weeks, I don't know the exact date, but I think it's next week already. I think it's something um, like the twenty the 26th of February, I think. All right, save the dates, 20, everybody. 26th so, of February, I think, yeah. 26th of February uh, on Harmonia Mundi, triple concerto by Beethoven, uh, Pablo Heras Casado is conducting Freiburger Baroque Orchestra. I have the immense joy of playing the cello and with my stellar colleagues, Isabel Faust at, on the violin and Alexander Melnikov on the forte piano. And uh, 
this has been this is our second project uh, together dear pablo um with the freiburger with this team after the, yes. the big schumann project many years ago and uh, this has been such a beautiful experience uh, i'm i'm so excited so um everybody um, keep uh, try to keep your ears open this is coming coming out now and i'm very much looking forward to this it's you know this this was of course after how many years was the schumann how many years ago the schumann recording say, yeah six years six or uh, six or seven years exactly mm -hmm. yeah yeah this was one of the I, i'm sure i'm completely sure in my life we will remain one of the most intense and rewarding and, and, and amazing and special projects in my life to to be to be one month with you three with isabel alexander and you and uh, and of course the my dear freiburger Baroque orchestra uh, absolutely uh, um, living with, with all these three concertos that they say every evening playing the three concertos plus this Allegro Scherzo Finale by Schumann and, and recording it was an amazing process and, and, and still so many people is, is you know, uh, uh, re reminding this, this, uh, this tour, these recordings and, and the fact that, that we years after I and mean, seven years after we we could reunite the same team that harmonia mundi is calling it's calling in a familiar way but the, the dream team again so the dream team is back and uh, the, and exactly in a moment when when none of us had had uh, the the chance of making music for during a lot of time mm -hmm. for the orchestra for me was the first time uh, making music after four months of lockdown, after the, this, this pandemic this situation, it was something that uh, that that was unbelievable. The first moments when we just started playing music together, and and yeah. not even just one orchestra and a conductor, but but you know three soloists, a conductor and an orchestra is the ultimate challenge and and the ultimate big celebration of music. So many people putting their souls. And, 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 and after so much time being silent in a recording studio, rehearsing and making it, uh, uh, it was something so special. And, and as we always try, let's try to make it from scratch. Let's try to rethink, to, to, to make it, uh, to forget about what we did before and, and think the piece uh, as, you know, uh, Let's take a new chance to make it alive and to make it modern and revolutionary and, and let's forget what we did before and let's uh, uh, try to make it happen in a, such a spontaneous way for the recording and, and I think it is, is going to be very, very special. Of course, now people have to wait until the 26th of February to, to, to listen to it, but I, I am already convinced that this will be something that uh, will be bring all that emotion and all that... Uh, um, you know, all the, uh, the situation, the spirit of that situation into the recording. Yes, yes, uh, you are so right about the, the emotionality of this moment. I remember that uh, three weeks before, we weren't 100% sure this was no, going to happen yes. because we didn't know if you were going to be allowed to come from Spain and do your quarantine and all these things. And, and so, and you are absolutely, I remember then the first notes and they are so special, of course, you know, in the bass, when the, the, the when you, you started with the, with the Freiburger, everybody was, there was a silence in the room, which was just absolutely <laughs> exceptional. So yes, and, 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 and you're right, I really, hope and think that the, the intensity with which we experience this moment will show will show in the recording. So yeah. thank and you. And of so course much. you 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 were you were the hero. I mean this is the I mean, cello and the cellist is the hero of this this recording. And uh, and it was it was amazing. And you were in such a generous and quiet and calm and positive uh, because it's uh, it's it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for a cellist this concerto. Yes, and uh, it is you have, that you have also to be so generous, not just being the only one, but you have to be generous. It's a it's a big piece. It's a big orchestral part as well. But uh, but you have a not, you have two other colleagues. But of course, it's mm -hmm. the cello part is demanding. It's it's very exposed, and and mm -hmm. so you have to be of course leading, but at the same time very generous. And after all that time. 
out of, I mean, away from the studio recording uh, and, and, and from playing with an orchestra, uh, you were so, so positive and calm and, 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 and ready and embracing everyone. I remember that and it was, it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Barbara. And I just heard today, yeah, a lot of news today that I hear. I got a call also three hours ago telling me that uh, on Aidajo they are going to show again, to put online again for a few weeks uh, together with the release of the CD. Uh, we had during the recording one run through for the mm -hmm. cameras and they are going to put it there so um, so everybody out there will be able to also watch. That's true. This, uh, of course, the Aidajo, Aidajo was, was an important partner of this moment because they were present with the with the supports and with their cameras and also um you know uh, sharing to the world this uh, precious unique moment uh, life in the in the in the very moment and and I, that Joe was was a big a big uh, partner and supporter for this yeah Pablo, many, 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 many thanks. It was wonderful to have you in, in, in this series. That was my dream for many, many weeks. So it happened. Now I am, I am, a, I'm a happy man. Um, Me too. <laughs> everybody, <I'll laughs> see you next week, next week we start, we enter the world of the six suite and we will start with a young, uh, brilliant soloist, Sergei Malov. Uh, because amongst many instruments he's playing, he's a brilliant violinist, but he also plays the viola da spalla, for which supposedly these suites were probably composed, and he's going to show us how the six suite sounds on the viola da spalla. And I saw that to... in, in some videos, and it's fascinating. I discovered yeah. with him, I discovered this quote of the viola da spalla, mm -hmm. and he's of course mastering that uh, in, in, instrument in such a way, and it's, a, it's an amazing new perspective on that on that music. So that's why I wanted to have him for the prelude of the six. He's going to be there next week. So see you all Fun, next week. Stay fantastic. safe and healthy.